I'd like to thank you for the invitation. I always welcome a chance to speak about the uh, research. Uh, it's an area that needs a lot more publicity and it needs a lot more understanding about how it pervades our lives. I should start off by uh, with this picture that was taken from a cover of New York Magazine uh, in, back in, in 2004. And you see that this is a, uh, an illustration of the number of antennas that one finds in Lower Manhattan. And by now, there are far more antennas there. And I've got 400 antennas around me, and I don't see any of them. And they're all doing their business. So we have these new developments, and people are a little frightened. They're, we don't know what to make of them. How do we find out what really is behind them? What, what effect are they having on us and on our health? And there have been many studies, and there, I quote here one by Hardell, where he finds that if people have been using cell phones for 10 years, there's a 10-year latency period, there's an increased odds ratio. That is, one gets, it's almost three times as much likely, likelihood of getting, developing glioma, and the same whether you've got a mobile phone or a cordless phone. So this is a, uh, an indication that when you keep this antenna close to your head, it's exposing the brain and giving rise to changes that lead into, that cause, uh, eventually lead to glioma. In this data set, there was a subpopulation of people who started using uh, the cell phone before they were 20 years old. And if they have used it for, since, they've used it for 10 years since they were uh, younger than 20, the odds ratio more or less doubles. So if you're younger, not only do you have the uh, prospect of uh, being exposed more over a, a period of time, but the changes that occur uh, in your brain apparently are much, uh, much more harmful for the, uh, to your health. Now, I quoted the Hardell st uh, study. That's only one study that has come out, and the reason I, I quote it is because that is a study that's done by an independent investigator. He is uh, not funded by industry, and his methods are generally considered to be above any kind of suspicion or any sense that they're, that they're in any way tainted. Uh, one of the problems with industrial support is that there tends to be a, an uneasy correlation between the level of support that one gets and the outcome of the result of, of the study. For example, if one studies the effect of RF, looking for an effect versus no effect, you get roughly the same number of results for effect and non an effect. However, if you divide the studies up into two categories, those that were funded by industry and those that were not funded by industry but by independent agencies or some other way, then you find there's a clear difference in the, in the way in which the results come out. Stuff that is funded, research that is funded by industry tends to find no effect. Two-thirds of the results are that way. So there is reason to suspect any time you get in industrial support for a project, there's, the results are suspect. And there's a book that's come out recently by David Michaels called Doubt is Their Product, How Industry's Assault on Science Threatens Your Health. And it's written by someone who worked in the US government and saw how the US government was manipulated. The various agencies of the government, uh, the various appointments from people from industry that came into government, that somehow they were able to stop the government from regulating things that were definitely dangerous. But it's fascinating when you see the extent to which the government has allowed this to happen. Now, I want to show you another thing, another source of RF in our environment, which we've been living with for quite a while, that we don't think about we, we, when we talk about cellular phones. And this is the uh, antennas that are broadcasting FM and TV and the UHF. This was a study that was done by Neil Cherry and, uh, in 2002, was published online. And what he has here is a plot of cancers that develop in, uh, in children 
as a function of distance from the antenna. And this is given in terms of risk ratio. And the interesting thing is that, of course, it falls off. The risk falls off the further you get away from the antenna, which is what you would expect. But bear in mind that when you're about here, you're about two miles from the antenna at, at, at a distance three kilometers, the risk is still five. You know, it's five times likely to get a cancer of some kind. And the power density, which is another aspect of the study, was one microwatt per centimeter squared. This value is a thousand times lower than the current safety standard. In other words, even at this low value, you've got an elevated risk of getting cancer five times the, uh, the risk that you would expect. So that the current safety standard, which is based on the, the thermal standard, uh, is clearly not providing any kind of protection for certainly this kind of disease. People have to look at the biology that is now known and make adjustments to what we consider safe, a safe level. And we gave values in the Bioinitiative report, and I put down the values here, uh, and you'll see that the ELF values are approximately a thousand times lower than the values that are prevailing now, that are recommended by the agencies. The same is true for RF, uh, and I showed you the example from the uh, Sutra Tower report. You see, basically, the values that we recommend as target values are micro as opposed to milli, a factor of approximately a thousand. And finally, what we should really say is that we need a realistic biological standard to replace the standard that is now in place, this thermal standard. This is not a standard at all. If, if it's protective of anything, it's protective uh, against electrocution. But nobody worries about that these days. Uh, we worry about other things that are far more uh, insidious. And that we should also institute precautionary approaches because we suspect that there may be a lot of harm associated with prolonged exposures. And certainly on a personal level, prudent avoidance, which means that use landlines when you've got the option for use, using landlines, limit your calls, and finally, for the regulatory agencies, ALARA, as low as reasonably attainable. We should aim to get our exposures down to a reasonable minimum, and that's for people to decide. We obviously, if we're dealing with, uh, uh, it's easy to understand in terms of automobile speed, you know, if we travel at 50 miles an hour, we'll have a certain number of fatalities. If we raise it to 60 miles an hour, we'll obviously have more fatalities. The question is, uh, how many fatalities is our society willing to live with? Or with EMF, we know that exposure of some kind is going to have its consequences biologically. And there'll be a segment of the population that will succumb at some level and what's, what we have to do is to decide as a society what is the level at which we want to set that. And that's a political decision. I think the scientific decision is clear that the standards have to be looked at again and have to be reset. Thank you.